everybody. Um, I trust that you are well, safe, and rejoicing in the Lord um, on this Thursday morning. As you know, uh, we've started a new series from the book of 1 Timothy, and this morning it is my uh, pleasure to briefly uh, share with you uh, chapter 3, 1 to 7. I'm a section commonly known as the qualifications of elders. Um, some versions, instead of using elders, will, will use the term uh, overseers, uh, bishops, or even pastors. Um, the, the truth is these terms are used interchangeably. Um, they mean uh, the same thing. Now, one thing I love about this, this epistle, uh, 1 Timothy, um, is that in it, Paul, uh, in fact, gives us clear instructions um, on how the Church of Christ should look like. And if you were to ask uh, how the Church of Christ should look like, Paul would say, okay, let's start from chapter 2. The Church of Christ should be a praying church. It should be a praying community. Now, in chapter 3, um, he's going to tell us that the Church of Christ should have godly leaders in it. And he focuses his attention now on elders. Now, let me ask ourselves this question. Uh, what, are the, what are the responsibilities of elders within the church? And the Bible will answer that question, even First Timothy itself. If we look at chapter 4, verse 14, um, it will tell us that elders are to ordain um, other leaders within the church. And then you move to chapter 5, verse 17, it tells us that elders are to teach, preach, and lead. Then you go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verse 12 to 14, it tells us that elders are to help those who are spiritually weak within the local church. And then in 1 uh, Peter chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, and there Peter tells us that elders are to shepherd the flock. Elders are to take care of the flock, God's people. So these are their responsibilities. Now, a second question is, what kind of men should they be in order to fulfill these responsibilities? Then chapter 3, verse 1 and 7 answers uh, that question. This section, in fact, answers that question. Listen to what it says. I'll read from verse 2. It says, an elder or a bishop uh, then must be blameless, meaning um, there shouldn't be any accusations leveled against an elder. Um, this is like the umbrella of all the, the qualifications. It's not saying that an elder should be sinless, because only Christ is sinless, um, but there shouldn't be any accusations uh, leveled against him. It should be the husband of one wife, meaning one elder, one wife. No polygamy within the church. No polygamy within even the leadership, as God sees it. It should be temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, his, his doors are, should be open to welcome people in, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, shouldn't be fighting people at church, not even outside the church, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, meaning peaceful, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having um, his children in submission with all reverence, for if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? And should be an exemplary husband, an exemplary father, um, teaching um, his children uh, well and praying that they know Christ and they serve him and, and become um, good believers. Or let me just say become believers in the Lord. Um, not a novice, meaning not a new believer, um, lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. And then lastly, verse 7, Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. He should have a good testimony inside the church and also a good testimony outside the church. These are the kind of men that God wants in his church to take up the leadership position and lead his flock. May the Lord help them and may God grant them grace and wisdom to accomplish this task as he intends it to be.